It's time for another episode of Security Decoded. I got my big brain friend right here, Chris, and we're going to talk about the security news for the last week. In that security news is uh, new vulnerabilities for uh, iOS and that have been repaired with the iOS that was just released yesterday. Uh, new vulnerabilities in the Android device. We'll talk about the future of malware and a bunch of other subjects. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with Security Decoded. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Security Decoded on TechZen TV. Today I'm sitting here with Chris and we're going to talk about this past week in the news and security news. So we're going to start right from the top and we're going to talk about iOS. This week uh, iOS had a new release. It's a 6.1. It um, fixes some vulnerabilities that uh, were in iOS. The uh, CA certificates were mistakenly issued from uh, Turk Trust that could allow a man in the middle attack that was fixed in this update. There is also some cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that were in iOS that have been fixed in this update as well. And uh, while we're on iOS, uh, we're gonna talk about a store, a pirated app store that has some uh, apps on it. And uh, basically what they have done with this is they use the Apple system for distributing apps inside of a corporation and they have created a fake app store and it can be distributed by uh, a link and it's not really a huge security risk um, but if somebody gets the spam they can actually you know, install the malware so um, how big an issue do you think this really is i think it would all be based on uh, who gets the links and what, what they're downloading and what they're seeing with respect to that i'd be more concerned about uh, people the, the certificate issues and and the mismatch on that i know apple has been very they, they're usually pretty pretty quiet about their vulnerabilities until they send their patches out so once their patches come out or their new ios comes out you'll hear a big thing about what's going on they usually don't try to put fear into the public i know a lot of other people and a lot of other vendors will go oh we have a vulnerability or we have a problem and then they won't I mean, and they'll disclose it and not send any kind right. of patches out. So right. Apple's been always pretty good about that. So they'll, they'll get it out and say, hey, we got we got a solution for you as opposed to not having a solution. And they make it really easy to download the new uh, these patches. I mean, if you got a mobile device or if you have... Right, like, it's automatic updates. It's really easy yeah, to exactly. do. Exactly. So it works out pretty well. Right. So how long do you think it'll take them to get it fixed? Um, probably not long at all. You think I mean, it's, a, it's a huge security issue they need to get work, working on fast? Or? I, I think any kind of security issue has risk. So, I mean, any company's always, it's all based on risk. So, uh, uh, so usually a quick turnaround is, is the best thing. So I would usually say within five business days, I know with Java, when they had their previous vulnerabilities where they said they had no, any kind of, when Oracle had uh, no kind of patching or anything in place, and and they wanted people to disable Java. They were real quick to uh, to get their turnaround because it impacts business, it impacts money. I mean, uh, you look at, uh, I mean, you're not able to do business. People get scared. They don't want to do certain things, and it's, I mean, it, it it's it, time is money when it comes to that kind of aspect. That's right. That's right. All right. So let's go to another subject that mm -hmm. actually Windows 8. Yes. So Windows. Mm-hmm. What do you think of? First of all, what do you think of Windows 8? I think Windows 8 is the next Vista. I think it's going to get yeah, passed very over. Good. I mean, <laughs> it's not really a discussion we, no, we want to talk you know, too much about. I, but. I almost think it's a null issue to really even think about what's going on with Windows 8. I mean, it's the same. I mean, it's. I mean, it, it, it's just. I mean, instead of getting your blue screen at depth, you get a little more pr prettier screens and different right. components that are on there that make it. I easy can't get used to the interface. No. Just it's just weird. Not at but all. But Windows 8, there is a piece of malware going around that claims to activate Windows 8. So you can download Windows 8 from somewhere and run this program and you get your free copy of Windows 8. However, not all good things are really true. And in this case, that is the case. It's actually a piece of malware that is tricking people into downloading it and installing it. So um, this is something that's just out, I believe yesterday or today I heard about this. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it actually could be dangerous. People want something for free. You want to check out Windows. Everybody wants a free ride. I mean, right. it, it's easy to do that. I mean, what's funny is, is I mean, I mean, you, you look at the antivirus companies that are out there, how quick that they're going to be able to put out to, to search for this malware. I, I tell you, I, I'm a strong, if you're using a Microsoft product and um, 
Microsoft Essentials is pretty good. So, I mean, I, I guess the proof is in the pudding is, is how quick are, they, are you going to have a signature out there that's going to look for something like that when you're on your, your regular right. version. Yeah. Look at most people that can barely even handle Windows XP. XP, right. you're, you're going up to Windows 7, and people are starting to do that migration, and now you have Windows 8. It's going too fast. Yeah, and then this is going to be a surprise to them. They download this thing thinking they're going to get Windows 8, which doesn't, what I understand, doesn't even activate it. It just infects you in the process of doing it. I mean, it. you'll see your screen. So. I mean, a typical when you have something that's running in the back or that's like a rootkit or something, a rootkit being uh, that it's something that you don't know that's going on in the background, you may see your screen flash, and that's the end of it, and you got a listener set up for a command and control. I'm not too sure if you can elaborate a little more on what this, ba is this a backdoor, or is this a Trojan, or is it more to inf an info stealer? Or? It's more an info stealer, because when you go to register, ask you ask you for information, personal mm -hmm. information to register it, and mm -hmm. that's where it collects the information. But it does not activate Windows, and um, just basically is a phishing, phishing scam. So... So it's pretty lightweight then. With it's pretty lightweight. With what's happening. Yeah, but I see a lot of people getting tricked by that, you know. But has any, I mean, one of the things that I've done in the past, and I know you've done that. Have you had a chance to? Have you had a chance to actually see it and reverse it? Or no, actually, I haven't done it yet. Because that, that would be the good thing to do. Is it's always interesting to reverse that piece of software. What it looks like it's doing in the front and what it's doing in the background. Right. Would be two different That's right. things. Though. Right. All right. So let's talk a little about Skype. In the last uh, week here, we've heard about some malware it's propagating via Skype. And this isn't the first time we've ever had this happen with Skype. Um, but this is called Shylock, and it spreads via Skype. And uh, it's actually a worm, and it copies itself from Skype to Skype. Um, let's see. Based on the analysis, actually, they're calling this worm bublic.gx. And it installs itself as a plugin. Next, look, there's another worm, too. Worm Kespi is, an, or Kepsi is another one. No, a lot of times malware companies, different companies will have slightly different names for their malware. Right. Though, so the audience should probably realize that, right. uh, you know, a lot of these are one and the same, but there's really no unified standard when Right, the best to thing to do is go to somewhere um, reputable. like Malware Bytes, something like that, put virus the name total. in. You have Virus Total, something like that, or we'll, we'll give you the different names as well. So um, this is not the first time that Skype's had this problem. It just seems like it's... Um, starting to spread itself a little bit more. I wonder if this is almost targeted to the fact that Skype is finally, I mean, I mean, Microsoft, you know, on Skype now. Right, so and they just dropped it. They just dropped the Microsoft Messenger and converted yeah, it to Skype. And, so. and it's, it's, I mean, they're, they're going into the integration of what's called Microsoft Link. So, I mean, Microsoft Link was Microsoft's version of it. And, and in time, you're just going to see Skype drop out. Right. And sometimes you wonder if this is just, the, 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 the timing on this is almost too surreal to yeah. the fact that, yep. that, that there was They got a bigger market all of a sudden. Like, exactly. They got the hit. Just like anything, you get a big market, they're going to start targeting targeting this. And actually, with things that Skype's been doing recently, it's actually, it actually hasn't been working as well as it used to be uh, with all the conversions that they've been doing. So if you use Skype, just be careful. Um, there, you know, the other thing I had... Don't put any plugins in. Yeah, don't put any plugins. You know, the other thing I've had in the last two weeks, I've had two phone calls from system maintenance on Skype. And I'm like, system maintenance? So from after looking it up, what I found is instead of calling your home to say your machine needs maintenance... They're now calling you on Skype saying, hey, you have a problem with your machine. We need to get one and fix it. You bring up an inter interesting subject. I've had to deal with that in my day job, and I've seen a lot of where micro people will come back, and it's a concerted effort where you'll have what we call phone phishing. And th I mean, there's a oh, lot for of, maintenance yeah, and stuff? I mean, yeah. from it, routine maintenance over the telephone, and, it, right. and it's more phishing where they're asking you for information, saying there's malware on your machine, and you're opening up a WebEx session to... Uh, yeah, and the average home user wouldn't know any difference. No, or the I mean, office worker. You're thinking Microsoft's yeah. calling you up, and I mean, that's the thing. You, you, you hang up the phone. You yeah, never exactly. You any information. I know there's a couple of places, and this this would be fun to do, as I mean, but I, w I wouldn't recommend it to anybody unless you know what you're doing, is to set up a virtual machine and, and have them go in. And see, and actually, that's what I said. I was, next time they called me, that's what I was going to do. Have a little fun <laughs> yeah. setting that up. I've actually I've, I've seen that where people have done that, and they've set it up and said, oh, by the way, we're recording everything that you've been doing off of here. And that's yeah, I was talking about even setting setting up a machine, a VM that was like, look at the FBI. When they get in there and start mm -hmm. doing maintenance on it, come up as a Federal Bureau mm -hmm. investigation. You know? Now, the interesting that, twist to this with the phone phishing is, is I've been finding that they're doing what's called anti-spoofing. So you won't, I mean, you'll see numbers that look totally legitimate. They'll even they'll even come up. So if you have caller ID or different things on there, they'll pull they'll try to pull legitimate numbers off and spoof Which is those. part of the yeah. system maintenance in Skype. System yeah. maintenance was calling me. So. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's, a, it's the automatic number identification spoof. Right. So it's an, another new slight twist to that. So the same thing. Yep. All right, so kind of on the same instant messenger, we'll give fair equal time to other ones. Of course, <laughs> Windows Messenger is gone. This problem existed in Windows Messenger as well. But Yahoo and... Uh, 
with the old Windows Messenger, which is still being phased out, Daxi has a remote access Trojan that's being distributed via um, Yahoo and, and Windows Messenger as well, and it's called Fake M. Again, it could be a different name depending on what, what malware, uh, anti-malware vendor you're using. So be careful about that. It's definitely spreading, they're definitely spreading things around. And uh, if you're not familiar with the remote access Trojan, that actually gives them access to your machine remotely so it can do very nasty things as well. All right, so we've had this question before um, of what do cyber criminals do with your data? And so I went out kind of searching for different uh, business plans, per, basically our business plans. I mean, it's, amount, it's amazing the amount of money they make with these things. And there's a whole, a whole I mean, business behind it. I mean, I've seen dollar amounts on different things. You'll see like $30 for a social security number. You'll right. see like $10 for a That's credit right. card, depending on the credit card. and the I mean, just there's there's just a whole myriad. Yeah, actually, this one article I was reading, it was uh, $5 to buy every all your personal information. And uh, let's see, what it included everything. It included your address, your social security number, all kinds of stuff. For five dollars, that's that's well, just it crazy. It sounds like the market's going down a little bit, though. It used to be a little more expensive, but now, I mean, it, it, I mean, that, that's a little concerning. It makes you wonder if it's five dollars for all your personal information. That must mean that I mean, it, it's 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 so rampant now that, yeah. that, that that the supply and demand has gotten the price down for different pieces of what they call the PII, the right. personally identifiable information. This article I was reading was they call it fools. I never heard that term before. Mm -hmm. um, the underground for, the forums where they buy the stuff mm -hmm. is called fools. Basically, it's your full information package is what it ends up being. Um, and they can still sell like you know ten thousand or twenty thousand at a time, and then they'll resell that data if they don't use it all to somebody else as well. So um, as far as what they do with the information, they they'll go through and uh, if you ever had a charge on your credit card, it's minimal and it's like three or four dollars. They're basically checking to see if your card's valid, and if it is, they'll start buying. High end electronics from places. So a lot of credit card companies are are, are pretty are, are pretty savvy. They're getting, savvy up, they're getting much better now. Yeah. Because if I if you leave your geographic location or if something comes up, yeah, from they, area they call on you. There, they'll do one know. transaction and they'll call. They'll put a hold on your card. I've seen that. Yep. So that a lot happen of it's to been me. catching up and it, it, it's been very good on that. I've had so it happen just going to West Virginia. It was like two miles away mm -hmm. and it came back or and or uh, Virginia and you get a call saying you, you changed states. I'm like, well, yeah, I only live a couple miles from there. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it, they're coming up with it, it's more it's more predictive. It's it's predictive patterns of buying and selling, and they, they realize what you're doing and where your where your locations are, right. your habits are, your circadian rhythm of the day. If you go to Starbucks in the morning, that's right. If you're at the bar in the afternoon, they'll know what particular place. And if you're going over to which drives some people nuts, them knowing what the, what all you do. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're going, yeah, I mean, there's whole a whole different side of security. But, that's yeah. that's that's a whole broach subject that there's no expectation of yeah. privacy anymore in the world. I that's mean, right. There's well, not. George Orwell was right, but he was like, uh, yeah, people think just they have, like have security years, is yeah. they're crazy. Just assume everybody knows everything about you at this point. Um, one of the other things they talk about is they sell these same people that sell these this information will also sell the plastic cards so they can make credit cards. Yeah. So, I mean, I've heard people even using, like, uh, hotel room keys and doing, re redoing the mag stripe on them that, with the credit card information, and they, they still work fine. If you go to a gas station and go in, it doesn't know the difference. I can't so. remember the company. There was a company a few years back that marketed that for the one card. Instead of carrying multiple cards, you just mag stripe it, and you would have the mag stripe right there oh, yeah, and I switch the card out. I saw that. Uh, then, I can't remember who made that. It was a little thing that had little buttons yeah, on it, and you just slide the card in and out. Different, and you would, it would have a mag stripe. That's kind of scary. That, to, that device I mean, is holding you your credit card that. information. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I lost all my credit cards. <laughs> That's exactly it. Probably some kind of hack into that as well. All right, so um, we want to talk a little bit about like, what small businesses should look for uh, coming up in the, in, the few, in the year, or throughout 2013 a little bit. Uh, we talked last time a little bit about some predictions, and there's more of these coming out all the time. Um, and in the next over the next year or so, small and medium businesses are going to be moving more to cloud uh, storage and a lot more mobile devices, which is it's a double-edged sword. That's right, exactly. It's scary in one way, but it's that's you're giving up security to the organization right. that's outside of you. So if you have a good group or you're good people that are there that are able to handle it, or you have a good consultant that's in, you're gonna you're gonna have good security there. Right. You, the best thing to do with that in that situation is also. Encrypt your data on your side. Don't don't allow the provider to encrypt it for you because they hold the keys to your data at that point, uh, and it's easier for people to get that information. But uh, even mobile devices, we're talking about smart mobile devices. You know, they're they're everywhere. You can't, there's no getting away from it. It's never going to end. So um, we have to start securing those devices. In fact, we'll talk here a little bit about some Android. 
I was actually as well. writing the policy on some uh, BYOD for a company before we were, we were in the, the infancy of writing that policy, and it's it's gotten to the point where you have your, your Android, your operating systems, you have your Apple, you have your iOS, you have uh, BlackBerry, and it's it's integrating in, in they're all three, I mean, and it's, it's writing a unified policy for everything, but the software companies are getting better at, at being able to handle every one of them, so you have one right. size fits all. And that's where the uh, that's where the beauty of BYOD is going to come is uh, you look right. You're looking at some kind of um, mobile device management system mm -hmm. to keep track that's of that. That's exactly yeah. that's centralized. Right. That doesn't solve the cloud issue. You know, no. ultimately, cloud issues becomes a trust issue with the, the, your provider. I mean, you really have to have great uh, contract negotiate or contracts with them to say that they're responsible for the data. And you got to know what standards. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. They attest right. to the ISO one seven seven nine nine, or if they're attesting. Right. It takes some that. research. You just yeah. don't want to go throwing data no. in the cloud. You so. have to make sure that they're. That they sign it, that they're having yearly audits, that they're going through and making sure that the what the, the integrity of the data in their data center is is, is there. The other big thing about uh, cloud providers is business continuity. What are you going to do right. if, you, if you have another? I mean, it's 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 part of security, quasi, but it, it's still if that data center goes down, how's your data going to be protected? And where's That's it right. going? And, and, and what's right? You have to know what they're doing in the back end to help keep keep your data safe. You're assuming they're keeping it safe. You yes. should never assume that. So um, moving beyond the computers and the laptops that we use every day means we have more devices because now we have, you know, you have the iPads, you have your iPhones, you have Android devices, mm -hmm. Blackberries, um, you know, everybody's carrying some kind of mobile device around. So you've got a lot more devices you have to secure now than, than just that one piece of hardware that you gave somebody when they first came, you know, came to work for you. So. Mike and I were talking earlier about the show, and the other thing that I think small to mid-sized businesses really need to be worried about is what they're advertising to the public internet and how and what what's going on. There's a company out there called Rapid Seven, and I was reading up on this tonight, and uh, there was millions of devices that are using uh, what's called universal plug and play. So they're 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 discovering devices behind small and mid-sized businesses that are advertising these uh, different services that are out there that have, and this is for like plug and play. Like if you want to plug something in, it'll automatically figure out the right. operating system what it is and find the, the appropriate drivers to install it. And if you got that stuff out there, I mean, it's that I mean, it, it touches on the subject of what you talked about is data leakage prevention. That's right. I mean, you're, you're advertising yourself, and you want to advertise the least amount of what you have up to your public. Ex except right. I mean, a great example of that is like Lantronics makes this print server now, this tiny little mm -hmm. print server. You plug in your network, and it finds all your printers. But to do that, it has to go out to its website to get information. So you've just sent out all your whole network configuration to get drivers for your printers. So. You know, that's a data leakage in, in a way. That's not a very high risk of data leakage, but that's... The There's always before. risk. There's always risk. I mean, that's right. one thing in security that I always tell people. People always ask me, are we secure? And um, I, I always tell them, you got you, I mean, you either got a high level of confidence or a low level of confidence. You never give somebody a 100% answer, but you tell them right. at, at, at the best in layers that you have where you are. So you brought up BYOD. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, just in case some people aren't aware of what it is, it's bring your own device. So basically it's where... Uh, the employee brings their own device, and that can be a, it could be as simple as a cell phone or an iPad, but some companies are going as far as you go buy your own hardware. We'll subsidize the hardware when you purchase it. You, you go get what you want, and you bring it in. So that brings a lot of challenges into the environment. It brings a couple of challenges into the environment for securing the information, depending on the sensitivity of the mail and, and, the, and the information that's transpiring, but it also is a problem for the individual user, too. So say if that user separates from the company and and they have a lot of stuff that's personal on their devices, the, and the problem and the biggest challenge with BYOD is separating the personal information from the business that's information. Right. And when that person leaves, you're able to cut them loose but still preserve their personal information. Right. So either you do that in policy where you have a good policy where your personal information is backed up in a, in a certain area and you do a backup on that periodically, but then, then you're your corporate information is kept in another area but uh there's a there's a lot of like good is one of the companies that's out there that's coming up with some good encrypted services where, where you'll have information that's out there and, it, and it's 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 email it's also file collaboration and there's also uh there's a few apps that are out there i'm speaking strictly for ios but there are right. i mean good also goes for android and different areas right. but i mean active sync also works from the microsoft perspective where if you use an exchange mail which is very nice it, it'll just pull it right off and right. you have the potential to wipe your wipe your drive if, if it's gone. So you broach, broach a, a myriad of interesting subjects that come on there. Is, yeah, and then that, we didn't even talk about the, like laptops. I mean, how do you say your laptop is safe on network? You have the right antivirus. So you have all those as well. Like you have to have certain requirements to bring a laptop, bring your own device as far as a laptop goes as well. 
I mean, and that comes into entry points and exit points where, I mean, from a policy perspective, are you going to allow people physically on your network to use a wire, like use the wireless right. or components? Do you use, or are you just going to use the cellular component? Or you right, or do you use some kind of VPN 3G, through a guest uh, network into your network, that type of thing as well? I mean, and, and, and it opens up which, uh, opens up that potential NAC solutions. Right. And are you going to use right. any kind of NAC or what are you going to use to ma maintain compliance on systems? Right. So... In doing BYOD and cloud and smart mobile devices, we now have more working environments. So I'm talking like um, you're taking a couple hours off to go work at Starbucks because you want to drink a coffee, write a report, something mm -hmm. like that. So now you have environments where you have people all around you, so you have more possibility of data leakage just by people looking over your shoulder. No, that's where it comes into a policy issue. I right. was actually at a conference one time where I saw if you Bluetooth enabled, I mean, people can actually come through and, and go through your Bluetooth and gain access potentially to your system. There's, that's right. There's entry points where people can come in and go through there and, and pull information. So it's it's what you have in policy. If, if you decide that you're going to do BYOD with your personal device and decide that that's going to be there, what are you going to accept as an individual? Are you going to allow Bluetooth to be turned on or off? Are you going to allow pairing, listening? Are you going to... Are you going to allow your device to be wiped if, it, if it's removed? There's certain controls and certain things that you're going to have and advantages, but there's also things that you're going to give up as well. Right. All right, so let's do something a little fun. <laughs> oh, I remember this game. Yeah. So Temple Run. There is a Temple Run 2 out, and there is actually a fake version of Temple Run 2 that is out available on the uh, App Store, or for the, I guess it's the Play Store for Android, and it's it's... Malware. So you're downloading what you think is a game, and what you're what you're doing is really infecting yourself. Uh, the malware is um, let's see, malicious routines. They send notifications, so it's not really a, a severe piece of malware. It looks like it just does some annoying things more than anything. Uh, but the fact that it's malware at all <laughs> exists. This is more geared towards kids, though. Yeah, that's I mean, you true. Get kids, you get kids I play that games, out too. There. Yeah, I mean, we all do every now and again. You're sitting I'll like, play that but... to check out and yeah. <laughs> play a little game. So, yeah, that was kind of focused on Android, Temple Run 2 for Android. And while we're on the Android uh, bandwagon here, there is uh, spam that's going around. It's called Express Spam is, is the uh, name of the malware. And it actually uses your phone to send out spam. That's the first time I've seen a phone send out spam before. But that was, uh, it's about two weeks old and it's been out for a little bit. It's uh, apparently been a great success for the malware authors. It did a lot, it distributed a lot of malware. It said there were thousands of devices infected. Um, and throughout the cycle, there's between 75,000 and 450,000 pieces of personal information that it stole. During this process as this well. This all boils down to the fact that, I mean, Android has never been that good uh, at vetting their apps out. No, actually, that, that's, that's not getting any better. However, I will say the operating system itself is getting better at doing some things to protect itself. So it's got but better the store, corrective controls, but it, there's nothing yeah, but preventive the stores, in it. I mean, and security, you got three kinds of controls. You got preventive, detective, and corrective. And that's what you got to look at all those. Right. In that They're not aspect. doing very pre much preventive at all. <laughs> so, yeah. And we'll, we'll stick on the Androids. Uh, Basically, it's Trend Micro has said that in 2013, they expect the Android will hit a million malicious apps. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. Especially considering, I was reading earlier on one of the things that uh, in the year 2002, we only had, we had less than a million apps or malware piece of malware for all Windows. But, I mean, that's more, that's cumulative, though. No, I, I agree. Mean, I, I agree. mean, that would be more, I mean, you find them and you correct them, so it's more of a statistic just to give you an idea of how many... Right. It's one of those things, though, where it shows there. you that, you know, since Android's becoming so popular, it's going to become another target. But, I mean, this goes back to the, I mean, where where it goes to digitally signing your apps and knowing the repu and having reputation. Right. The biggest thing is, is the problem that I see that's out there is anybody will download anything. If you got something that looks like it's fun and, and it's out there, you're going to click it. And, right. I mean, and, and you're going to pull it down, and you're not going to know who it Especially came from. Especially when you think it's a free version, you got to pay for it. Yeah. Nobody wants to pay for anything. I mean, that's right. That's why I mean, it's, it's that's why it works so well. There's nothing bad. <laughs> there's nothing bad about finding stuff that's out there. There's many forever. There's many people out there that put that put applications and services that are out there that are that are free that are good services. But it's it's right. it's 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 knowing the reputation of where you're getting your information from. Okay, so um, another article that we said out there about this is again on Android. That is, people think they're safe on Android, and really you're not. They um, they did a re research on the Android uh, store, the Play Store, and there was uh, forty-five thousand pieces of malware, and that was by F Secure. 
So as Android grows, it's just going to become more and more. Again, this is the whole thing about Android becoming so popular. But it's everything now. I mean, I would even see. I mean, I, I mean, it, it's how you vet your apps, how you install your apps, and what you allow. Right. Your it's users it's more of a user do. education, you know. And in mm -hmm. the long run, is what you need to do to keep yourself safe. All right. So let's talk about IE6. IE6 still isn't dead yet, although it's getting there. <laughs> You know what? I've seen this happen before where you have antiquated versions of software out here because it, the, the HTML may be rendered differently in IE or the, yeah. I mean, what's being, or how, how different components are, are loaded up or, or what's being allowed, and it's, it's dangerous. So what they were saying now is it's 0.4% in the U.S. left of that. However, in China, it's still 21.3%, which doesn't surprise me because they basically don't buy anything over there. They, but there's recent vulnerabilities that came out with 6, 7, and 8 that came out, I, I right. mean, it's, I mean, I, I wonder if Microsoft almost welcomes that because it means, hey, you got to get off this, and they're, it's like yeah. the, the old adage of Cortez burned his ships in order for his men to go and go to the new world. I mean, you're forcing everybody, or you're giving everybody quote-unquote incentive to go to the latest and right. the greatest. And the funny thing is they actually have a countdown site. It's called ie6countdown.com. That's where I got those numbers from. So they're actually making a game out of it now, <laughs> watching the countdown for IE6, which has to be like one of the worst uh, web browsers ever. All right, so let's talk about Red October. Are you familiar with Red October? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Okay. I like Sean Connery. He was great. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so the Red October malware um, that was targeting governments worldwide, they're calling it the Swiss Army Knife of Espionage. Um, it's called Ramius. <laughs> yes. It actually had over a thousand separate components. I mean, you go through the list of things that it did, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy how much was in that piece of malware. It's very flexible. And we've, you know, it's probably, I don't want to say it's state sponsored, but it probably is something that's state sponsored, like other big pieces of malware. Black hat canvas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things I don't want to say. Um, it actually went undetected for five years. It, would, it did itself that well. Uh, it did recon, so it was. Um, that's one of the modules that it did. Mm -hmm. So it would get uh, information about machines that infected. It was very stealthy and very quick and quiet. It would download things to memory and get rid of them real fast. So it looked like it was, you couldn't even tell it was running. It was, it's, it's pretty interesting. I mean, taken... you know, I mean, even if it's running, you have to have, I mean, you have to have a, you have to have a, a footprint for it, though. That's right. The thing, There's something small somewhere, the but the way they said it was working was it was downloading the executable, running it, and then getting it out. Were there any TDSS components to that, or was there anything else? No, it doesn't, it didn't mention anything about TDSS or... anywhere. Um, I heard of it, but I didn't, I wasn't familiar with, that's my it, biggest this, thing They've is gone through and actually no. reversed it. They actually infected machines mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have it download all the agents to see what all it did. So it's pretty... It's pretty interesting. So I'm still trying to go through it all, but it actually would it would actually realize when you had an iPhone attached, and it would try to infect the iPhone, or if you had a USB thumb drive, it would try to infect the thumb drive. I mean, that's at, at such a low level that that's running. I mean, that, yeah. that's some stealth. It was very stealthy, but now they know what it is. They can you know look it up a little bit better and, and do better with that. So they actually came out with a uh, this you going through everything. See everything I have right here. Mm -hmm. Talk about everything that they've done. And reverse it. So mm -hmm. if you're interest, interested in what it does, it really has great detail out there. They did a nice job on on document a reverse reversal all right so let's talk about the cisco router bug actually I should say linksys mm -hmm. um, and linksys which is currently owned by cisco but is changing hands to belkin uh, as of this week um, cisco sold off linksys uh, to belkin but uh, last week they actually announced that they had a root vulnerability on one router now the router is kind of old it's a wrt 54 gl and if you remember, those are the blue, the old blue ones. Yeah, I had one by my disco globe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah. So that doesn't affect anything that's you know, real current. Most people have the small black ones since Cisco bought them. But it is a root vulnerability. And you know, they I'm are surprised that they're that. even supporting that stuff anymore. It's so long. I, I'm surprised they are, too. It's that old. But I guess because it's a root vulnerability, they want to make sure they take care of it. So um, they specify within about a week. Um, you have to be physically connected to the inside of the router to get the vulnerability. So basically they're saying, don't leave your friends on your router if you don't trust them. <laughs> Which I don't really, I don't do it anyway, so yeah. it's, uh, that only makes sense. Um, the research firm Defense Code is the one that made the public, uh, the findings public, and initially apparently Cisco said they had it fixed already, but they proved that they didn't. So, all right. So uh, I never heard of the story. Have you heard of Zaxby's? Yeah, I've heard of Zaxby's. That's a southern chain. Yeah. Like when we go down to our place down in Florida, I mean, you'll see Zaxby's all over the place, like on 85 and like. I never heard of them, so I had to go out and look out what they were. Good restaurant. But uh, they had a uh, point of sale system breach. Yeah. So there's a whole article about that. Just goes to show that uh, the point of sale is still a, 
a way of people to get in and get information, the credit cards. I mean, that's huge. I mean, yeah. the point of sale system. I mean, you break into the point of sale system. Right. You got you got all kinds of stuff in there yeah. you need. So I don't know how big Zaxby's is. I don't know if they're like they're there two are they a tier one or tier two PCI product or anything. Oh, from the from the from the experience you and I have, I mean, previously with point of sale systems, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, the thing of it is, is I I, I would assume the size of them uh, they're at least tier two. At least tier two. So mm -hmm. if you have a Zaxby's anywhere near you, <laughs> check your credit card statements just to make sure. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the future of malware. Um, and it's changing, and there's, there's a couple of different companies that have gone out and made predictions this year about how it's going to change. Um, and the first thing I talk about is multiple platforms. We've already talked about the multiple platforms. As that grows, they're going to see growth in um, malware growth or malware attempt growth in these different platforms as well. Um, the thing that they're afraid of is as people get so many devices, they're just going to like want to put their information in and, and go and not, not secure the devices which I think actually happens now because they don't understand how to secure their devices. So you get a new iPad and you already have an iPhone, you put in your information and you just, you just go. I can yeah. take it one step th further though. And it's not, even when you think you're securing a your device, your device is not necessarily secure. That's, I mean, what that's you're very saying, true. What, yeah. what you think is secure, to, I mean, it's a relative thing. What you think is secure and what, right. what, what, what in reality It's like securing your router, you know? Exactly. So people have different opinions on how you secure your router at home. And uh, that generally does not go far enough to secure your router at home. Um, they, uh, they predict that the conventional malware threats will gradually evolve. Actually, um, not many new threats as much as there will be, uh, more advanced ways of getting you infected with something as that, that, that's going to go that way versus the type of threat that it is more than anything. I mean, I, I've used, I saw that before you and I've seen that where there's vendors that are actually coming out with reputation scanning where that's right. as opposed to, as opposed to coming up with a signature set, they're, they're looking for uh, the heuristics, what they call it, where they're looking for similar patterns, something that just doesn't like look quite right. They'll send it right out into the, I mean, this is where cloud services have their, its advantage where that's right. Cause they can information out. Right. And, and you all share that instantly. knowledge together as well. It's, it's going to be more collaborative when it comes to the. Uh, c correction and removal of malware because you're going to find out a lot quicker as opposed to people going out and proactively these antivirus companies and looking for malware and, and having honey pots out in the different areas and pulling right. that information in and, and, and actively infecting it. You you as, as being infected are going to be actually helping in the long run if you, you're choosing a product wisely that has that capability. Right, and the thing about signatures is they're always behind. Mm -hmm. You can't make a signature till you find the actual piece of mm -hmm. malware. So that's why AV vendors really don't work that well as if they use signature based. So that'll be changing as well. Very and, much. And there's actually a lot of companies that are getting involved in that. I mean, like there's five, big money in that. Yeah, too. that's right. Uh, Symantec eventually uh, actually took out uh, antivirus out of their name. If you look at their website, it's now Internet Security because they didn't want to say that it was all antivirus because they're looking at the whole the whole. I mean, it's how close to the, the behind the wave you are. And you, you want to get in front of the wave. I mean, right. you're never going to truly get in front of the wave, but if you get as close as possible as you can, where you're doing, where, where you're looking at the heuristics. If doesn't, if it doesn't right. smell right, let's pull it up. Let's create something. And there's a lot of companies working on heuristics. I think, look at FireEye example. That's, that's a, exactly. That's a that network is. in line, not necessarily mm -hmm. on a machine. But then uh, there's a lot of companies that are working on things that are machine based as well that do mm -hmm. something very similar to that. So. Uh, another prediction, which I don't quite get this one, is Africa will become the new safe harbor for cyber criminals. I thought that, I said the same thing, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess what they're trying to say is that the bandwidth quality for Africa is now becoming uh, closer to the, the other third world countries where the malware is uh, being generated. So yeah. they see that as a growth industry. In it Africa. is a growth industry. I mean, I've been learning through some of the experiences of, I've had relatively recently that Africa is a... I mean, it, it, it. I mean, a lot of it was I mean, from a speaking perspective and call center perspective. It's that's where a new great big untapped labor pool is for people to be able to call right. as opposed to going to, to Asia or, or the subcontinent for for call centers. I mean, Africa. I mean, English is is probably more spoken in certain areas of Africa and well spoken. The the, the Queen's English and yeah, the, right. And you're, you're Especially in South a lot Africa, of business, yeah. a lot of business down there. Right. So we'll see how that goes this week, this mm -hmm. this year. We'll see how it, how that grows. So we just talked about this a second ago. Antivirus makers struggle to address today's next generation viruses, and there's some statistics statistics here. Uh, I mentioned earlier in 2000 there were less than a million pieces of malware, and in 2010 there was 49 million. I would argue there's more than that. I, yeah, I thought that number was that's, low that's too. That's very low. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Uh, and it, one of the things that really changed is it used to be 
that they were doing it for glory or being an annoyance more than anything. They would uh, put their name on the screen and, you know, or just destroy your machine because they want to destroy it. Now they're stealthy. It's about money. Yeah, it's all about money. You don't even know they're even there. And I think it's something people don't get because they think they're going to see when they're infected. And You're never going to know it. Yeah, you don't know. Guy, you won't even know it. You'll... you'll t- Wife, the house will be gone. The, yep. the more you'll be bankrupt, and you're not. Doesn't take there. long. Yeah. Uh, antivirus is reactive, which we just talked mm-hmm. about, because you can't really do an mm-hmm. antivirus pattern until you see you actually get the pieces of the sample malware. So they are looking at new te- techniques. Um, if you're in Australia and you get a tax agent report delayed tax returns, don't believe it. It really is a zip file download of a piece of malware. Uh, they're trying to get you to download a report to. Um, they say you're downloading a report to see your, to your back taxes, and it's not really that. It's really a piece of malware. Very similar to a piece of malware to what we get with the FedEx mm-hmm. email here in the United States. And uh, have you heard about the Mega? Remember Mega Download? Yeah. So that guy has uh, created... Oh, that's that guy that, yeah. He, he, he hasn't <laughs> he gone to jail yet, yeah, so... Yeah, but I'm waiting for that. Yeah, but he's created a new site now, another download mm-hmm. site. And he's claiming that it's uh, very secure, everything's encrypted. So, mm-hmm. um, But somebody already cracked it and said that there was a weakness in... The mega passwords. When you get your password confirmation, that's a password is in the confirmation, so it's in clear text. Mm. So uh, that's not very strong. All right, we've just spent a half hour or a little more uh, talking about security for this week. Hey, that's great. <laughs> I mean, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, that's that covers the news for this week. Um, I just want to put out that if you're watching this live, uh, you can always download us on iTunes, or you can go to YouTube and subscribe. Um, if you go to our website, you get the show notes as well as the other shows that we have online and the other episodes of Security Decoded. I'd like to thank Chris for being here tonight. Uh, thank you and, for having me. Yeah, I'll have him be calling you soon to come back. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.